The sermon you are about to hear was recorded at Grace Baptist Church, Cape Coral, Florida. For additional sermons and more information, visit our website at truegraceofgod.org. One of the reasons people don't get wisdom is because they don't want it. They simply don't have a taste for it. So the book of Proverbs has much to tell us on this front. I've been preaching through the book of Proverbs for some time now. And you have likely noted the many ways in which the Proverbs woo you toward wisdom. They entice you toward wisdom. They say, get wisdom. It's better than gold. It's better than fine gold. Get wisdom. And it will produce Blessed fruit in your life, and it will keep you from a thousand sorrows. We've heard that refrain again and again. And you likely can look around your life at the present moment and see just how important wisdom is. You likely can look around and see the consequences of not attaining wisdom. And so I want to address a different idea this morning. Not only demonstrating the value of wisdom, as the Proverbs have done for some time. But simply showing us where to find it. This is another impediment to getting wisdom. Once you've said, I'm all about it. I'd like to get this gold. I'd like to lay hold of this treasure. You can be greatly deceived. Simply as you're trying to figure out where to get this wisdom, we do have a number of voices coming at us, do we not? We live in a world with people, movies, books, teachings, podcasts, social media and messages. They come at us from every side. People shape us more than we want to admit. And we get shaped very quickly into believing that certain people have it all together. We look up to people. We have role models. We have examples. And sadly, many people get into all sorts of trouble because they have bad ones. That is, they think they're with the right folks, but they are not with the right folks. And they will pay the consequences of hanging around with the wrong people. This sermon surveys a number of texts from the book of Proverbs showing us where we can find wisdom. If one verse were to summarize the whole teaching, it would be Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. So turn there with me. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. If you're using the Bible that's provided in the seat in front of you, you're going to find this on page 537. Usually, as I preach here, there's simply an exposition of Scripture. But in the book of Proverbs, we've gone through the first nine chapters, and you've noticed over the past few weeks that we begin to develop themes. So we're going to be looking at a number of passages in the book of Proverbs this morning. But Proverbs 13, verse 20 is a central one. Hear this verse. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Wisdom is found among the wise. That's what this passage teaches us. And a number of other Proverbs teach us as well. If you hang out with the wise, then you will likely become wise. If you hang around with fools, then you will likely become like them. We're going to consider three questions concerning this main point. First, does everyone have wisdom? Second, What do the wise possess? And finally, what do the wise do? How terribly important it is that we understand the companion of fools will suffer harm. If we love each other, what would we then exhort one another to do? Stay away from fools. That sounds kind of harsh. How dare we say stay away from people? And yet we are a called out people. We are to be separate from the world. 
and he who walks with the wise will become wise. If we really loved each other, what would we then exhort one another to do? Get some wise friends. It will serve you well if you do. So we begin with question number one. Does everyone have wisdom? The answer to that is no. The wise do and fools do not. And these two are not at peace. The wise and the foolish are locked in an inevitable battle. We find ourselves on this battlefield. Neutrality is not an option. Pretending like the battle does not exist is a fool's errand, which simply leaves you on the side of the losing team, just masquerading as if you're not. In other words, the coexist bumper sticker is one of the most nonsensical things you could possibly put on your bumper. We saw one of these the other day. I had to explain to my children what this nonsense is all about. There on the sticker, it shows a variety of religions, a variety of ideologies, and then raises up the white flag and says, all of you just get along. Failing to see that these different religions and ideologies have radically different understandings of love, law, justice, salvation, joy, courage, and many other central pillars of life. The coexist idea says all of your deep convictions are really not that different. There's a bit of wisdom to be found in all faiths, in all peoples. But that's not what Proverbs teaches us. They rather teach us first, That the fool has no wisdom, but the wise man has plenty of it. That's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7, which says, Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. The fool simply does not have knowledge. You might find many things in the presence of a fool, but you're not going to find wisdom. And who is this fool? Well, the Bible tells us. Who he is. Psalm chapter 14 verse 1 says. The fool says in his heart. There is no God. Where you find a person saying that there is no God. Where you find a person living as if there is no God. There you find a fool. And there you find the absence of wisdom. You're simply not going to get any of it there. Proverbs 1 7. Fools despise wisdom. And instruction. But. They really think that they have it together. That's the danger. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 15. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. So. Precious flock. Children. You're going to run into people. That tell you they have it all together. That tell you that they know the way to go. They're going to tell you that they know how to live. But if they live as if there is no God. Then they're fools. And they don't have anything to offer you. And Proverbs chapter 14 verse 7 says, leave the presence of a fool. I'm not telling you that you have to be rude to them. I'm just saying you should very politely nod your head, turn away, and go the other direction. That's a very godly and Christian thing to do. And our world says, how dare you? There is no wisdom in the presence of a fool. But we see another thing. In Proverbs, the fool cannot find wisdom if he tries, but the wise man can. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 6 says, A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. So not only is wisdom not in the presence of a fool, the fool does not have wisdom as a companion, but even when the fool tries to seek wisdom, this verse says that he does it in vain. It is a meaningless enterprise. The fool does not have the resources to attain wisdom. What does he lack? He does not have an awareness of God. He says in his heart that there is no God. He doesn't know who God is. He doesn't know what God has done in the world. How then can he attain wisdom? He does not have the Holy Spirit. Well, apart from the spirit, we cannot have wisdom. We cannot know how we are to live in this world created by God if we don't have God. 
The fool does not have the word of God. The word of God is wisdom. It is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. If we don't have that light, there's no way that we're going to be able to attain wisdom. But the man of understanding can lay hold of wisdom. Why? Because he has these things that the fool lacks. The man of understanding acknowledges God. He sees that there is a creator and that he is created. And that if he's going to live well in this world, if he's going to live in the best way, which is what wisdom concerns, then he's going to have to acknowledge this God. He has the spirit of God so that he can understand the things of God. He has the word of God so that he can attain the truth of God to live well. Continuing to answer our question, does everyone have wisdom? Well, no, for the fool has more folly coming to him. But the wise man has more knowledge coming to him. That's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 18. It says the simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. But we can see that the situation is getting very bad for the fool. Not only is wisdom not in his presence, not only is he unable to track wisdom down. But something else, in fact, is tracking down the fool. Something has its eyes set on the fool. What is that? Folly. The simple will inherit folly. We often don't know what we're going to inherit. Much less do we know what other people are going to inherit. But when you find a fool, you know what he's going to receive as an inheritance. He's going to receive more foolishness. By the same token, the prudent man, he is going to inherit truth. He's going to inherit more wisdom. This is the logic of the kingdom. Jesus says to him who has more will be given to him who does not have. Even what he has will be taken away from him. And we, we simply throw up our hands at this truth. We say, that doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. Let's even the playing field a little bit. That's not what scripture does. Where you find a fool, you can guarantee more foolishness is coming. Where you find the wise man, more likely than not, more wisdom is coming to him. Galatians chapter 6 says, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he reap. There is a sowing and a reaping principle going on. Does everyone have wisdom? Absolutely not. There's more answers in Proverbs to that question. We see that the fool promotes folly. But the wise man promotes wisdom. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 16 says. Every prudent man acts with knowledge. But a fool flaunts his folly. So let's take the fool. He doesn't have wisdom as a companion. He can't track down wisdom if he tried. He's got more foolishness coming to him. But here we see he flaunts his folly. He promotes his folly. The, the production of. Of folly from a fool is inescapable. There is no way that he can suppress it. In the same way, the wise man, what does he promote? He promotes knowledge. He acts with knowledge. He demonstrates knowledge by the way that he lives. The fool flaunts his folly in his relationship with God. He says, there isn't one. He flaunts his folly in his relationship with sin. He says, oh, it's not really that big of a deal. He flaunts his folly in his relationship with his family. Watch a fool among his family. Watch a fool that cannot receive instruction about how he is to be a father to his children, who despises counsel about how he's to be a husband to his wife. Watch a fool be unwilling to receive correction from father and mother. He will flaunt and promote this folly that's going on in the world. It's been going on from the very beginning and continues today. The wise man, on the other hand, he acts with knowledge. You can see his knowledge at work in his relationship with God. 
You can see him speaking to God and listening to God and living for God in the world. He promotes knowledge and his relationship with sin. He'll tell you what sin is really about as he deals with his own sin, as he confesses his sin, as he repents of his sin, as he takes his sin seriously, seeing the sinfulness of sin in view of Christ's cross. He demonstrates his knowledge and his relationship with his family. Watch him there in his home. Watch him loving his wife as Christ loved the church. Watch him raising his children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Watch the godly woman in the home caring, helping her husband, teaching her children, correcting them, serving society in various ways. The fool promotes folly. The wise man promotes wisdom. We see also that they do this with their words, the way that they speak. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2 says, The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of fools pour out folly. That same chapter, Proverbs 15, verse 7, The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the hearts of fools. Both wisdom and folly will be uttered forth from lips in this world. And oh, how much talking there is today. You find it everywhere. You used to have to go out in the marketplace, and now the marketplace is in your pocket. You have access to great words of wisdom, and you have access to words of stupidity. And so we need to learn this lesson well now, church. Does everyone have wisdom? No. Leave the presence of a fool. Don't listen to the words of a fool. Make sure you know who the wise are, which is what we're going to get to in point number two and three of this sermon very shortly. Before we go there, let's look at this battle between the wise and the fool again. We see also the fool brings forth ruin, but the wise man knowledge. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 14 says the wise lay up knowledge But the mouth of a fool brings ruin near. So not only does the fool promote folly, but then he produces the nasty fruit of that folly. Not only does the wise man promote wisdom, but he then produces the blessed fruit of that wisdom. What are you going to find among the fool? He's going to bring ruin near. He's going to bring destruction to your life. The fool brings relational ruin. The fool brings sexual ruin. He brings emotional ruin and mental ruin. The fool brings destruction. The wise, on the other hand, bring about the sweet fruit of knowledge. They live wisely. They live in God's created world, acknowledging the creator. Guided by his word. He brings knowledge in relationships. The wise man brings the blessing of sex according to God's design. He brings nourishment to our emotions, understanding that God has made us body and soul. He brings blessing into familial relationships. But as we seek to answer this question, does everyone have wisdom? There's one final word from Proverbs, and that is the fool praises the wicked, but the wise man fights against the wicked. Proverbs chapter 28, verse four. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law strive against them. If you forsake the law, you're not only going to be a fool, you're going to praise fools. You're going to. Be on the side of the wicked. You're going to exalt the wicked. If you're on the side of the good guys, the side of the wise, the side of those who keep the law, Proverbs 28 verse 4 says, you're going to strive against them. You're going to strive against the wicked. There is a war going on in this world between light and darkness. We saw at the very beginning, Genesis chapter 3, as sin entered into the world, God said, 
he's going to put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. There have been two seeds battling. There is the kingdom of light. There is the kingdom of darkness. And those within that kingdom of darkness rage against the sons of light and they rage against Christ. Psalm 2 portrays them. They try to burst apart the bonds that God has set upon them. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot against our Lord, the anointed one? The sons of light must proclaim the truth and live wisely. In Psalm 110, we see the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, where King David says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. This battle continues to rage. So what's the application for us from this first question? Does everyone have wisdom? No. The wise do and fools do not. And that's not a mean thing to say, Christian. That's the Bible. The world says, be true to yourself. They say, to each their own. They say, don't be judgy. Who are you to be telling others how to live? They say, all roads lead to God and to good. Take the one that best suits you. But God says, the wise have wisdom and fools do not. So acknowledge this war. Identify it in the world. Observe it in your daily life. See how those who walk according to wisdom end up propagating good in this world and good for themselves. And those who walk according to folly propagate folly in this world and suffer the fruits of that folly. But don't only acknowledge it yourself. Teach others. Raise up young people in this church to identify the wise and the foolish. Well, how do we identify the wise? We begin to answer that question with our second question, which is what do the wise possess? If you say not everyone has wisdom, those who walk with the wise become wise. It becomes very critical that you can identify the wise and the enemy lies. To you about this all the time. He is adamant in getting you to think that people are wise when they're not wise, so he can get you around them, which are fools, and then you can suffer the fruits of his folly. We can identify them by what they possess. What do they possess? Well, first, the wise possess the fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom and humility comes before honor. This fear of the Lord is the central possession. It's the foundational possession. All other possessions of the wise grow out of this one. If this one is missing, the others Cannot be because Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. What is this fear of the Lord? It's reverence for God. It's the reverence that a son or a daughter have for a loving father who is indeed father, who disciplines those whom he loves. The fear of the Lord is an acknowledgement that there is a God, there is a creator. He is holy. He is set apart from us. He's altogether different than us. Our Lord is worthy of fear, brothers and sisters. Because he's a God of wrath. He's a God of justice. He's worthy of fear because he's a God of mercy. He's a God who forgives us as we come to him. We desperately need this humble reverence, this trembling before our God, not as one would tremble before a wicked father who in rage beats his children, not at all. But the humble reverence that a son and daughter rightly have for a holy father who walks according to the law of God. If you don't have this fear of the Lord, you will never be able to live wisely in this world. That's because Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19 says the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. It is in wisdom that God set up this world. You ever notice that it operates according to certain laws? 
You ever go kick a concrete wall? How does that work out? You can go kick a concrete wall a thousand times, and guess what? You're going to have a thousand broken toes. That's how this works. You ever thought about why it works that way? Because there's a God. There's a creator. There is one who rules over this world, and the world testifies to him. And so we have two options. We can either not get in accordance with his ways and suffer harm, or we can get in accordance with his ways, live wisely in the world, and receive that blessing. Where does this fear come from? It comes from God. If you lack this reverence for the Lord, you desperately need God to reveal it to you. And you're in a good place because you're hearing the word. You're gathered with those who do fear the Lord. You're hearing God exalted. And by His grace, He can open up your eyes to see. Open up your heart to feel this reverence that He rightly deserves. So the wise possess the fear of the Lord. What else do they possess? The wise possess authority with parental love. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching. Proverbs 6.20 My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. The wise possess authority with parental love. Now you might say, you don't know my dad and mom. I don't want to have to listen to them and get wisdom. Well, granted, all authorities are not equal. There was, of course, King Saul who tried to pin David to a wall with a spear. And then holy King David, who in the main ruled over people justly with wisdom. So all authorities are not equal, but all authorities are still authorities. Obey your mom and dad stands. If they tell you to do something God says not to, then you have to submit to the higher authority, to God, not them. But otherwise, children should be heeding the wisdom of their parental authority. And we should see that God has established a hierarchical world. We not only have familial authority, but God has also established church authority. He has also established civil authority and If we would be wise, then we need to listen to those authorities. We need to hear them. We need to follow them. Unless they're telling us to do something contrary to God and his word. The wise also possess a love for discipline. That might sound strange. And yet, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1 says, Whoever loves discipline, loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is stupid. Where you find people that love correction, they, they delight in being brought into accordance with God's law, there you find the wise. They have this discipline of correction. They also have a discipline of stability. Proverbs 19 verse 2 says, Desire without knowledge is not good. And whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. The fool makes haste with his feet. The wise man has stability. He has self-control. He has the ability to say no to things that deserve a no. Where you find those with this discipline and self-control, there you find the wise. Does this person have self-control in duties to God? Prayer, reading scripture, worshiping, giving. Does this person have discipline and self-control with sex? Does this person have discipline and self-control with belongings? Well, if he does, then he's a wise man. The wise also possess patience or long-suffering. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 says, He who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Proverbs 14, 29, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. This doesn't mean that wise people never get angry. It means they're slow to anger. You can think of a man who presents himself as a cool spirited man who never gets angry. The problem is he doesn't get angry at what God gets angry at. That's not a wise man. 
But the wise man is patient. He suffers long. He can be patient because he acknowledges when he faces all kinds of trials and things aren't going the way that he wants, he knows that he's not God. You see, the problem with the man with a hot temper is he doesn't like the way that God's ruling his universe. That's the problem at the end of the day. And such a man is not wise. The wise possess humility. Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Humility, too, is a fruit of the fear of the Lord. That's why the wise have this characteristic. Seeing they are not God, the wise humble themselves. Seeing they cannot solve their problems, the wise humble themselves. Seeing God orders their lives, the wise humble themselves. Acknowledging that they're entirely dependent upon God, the wise humble themselves. Where you find the humble, there you find the wise. The wise possess joy and understanding. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. The fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Have you found this man before? He loves to talk. He loves to talk about what he thinks. He loves to talk about what's in his mind. He loves to share his opinion on the matters of the day. But the problem is, he doesn't really want to know the truth. He just wants to be heard. He's a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. The wise, on the other hand, they really want to understand. They take pleasure in understanding. They take joy in knowing the truth about God. They take joy in understanding the truth about man. They take joy in understanding how God's world works. These are the things that the wise possess. Study them well. Examine them well, church, so that you can be among them. He who walks with the wise becomes wise. So examine yourself. Are these possessions your possessions? Do you have the fear of the Lord? Do you have this reverence? Do you have humility? Do you take joy in understanding God's world? Are these possessions possessed by your friends, by your closest companions, by the people that you look up to? Do the people that influence you have the fear of the Lord? If they don't, you very well may be in danger of being a companion to fools. Those who are companion to fools will suffer harm. Find the wise Walk among them. We see more about the wise with our final question, and that is, what do the wise do? First, the wise hear the law. Proverbs 28, verse 9. If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs 19, 27. Cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. You will find the wise listening to the law. Psalm 1. Do not stand in the seat of scoffers. His delight, rather, is in the law of God. And on his law, he meditates day and night. That man who meditates day and night upon the law. What is he like? He's like a tree planted by a stream. His leaves are always green. He bears his fruit in his season. Why? Because he hears the law. He meditates on the law. He thinks upon the law. That's what the wise do. Moreover, the wise obey the law. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. In the New Testament, we hear James say that we must not be mere hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Examine your friends. Examine your companions. Young people. Young people. Do your friends obey the law? Do your friends delight in the law? 
Do your friends come to you and confess when they have transgressed the law? If they're not doing these things, they're fools. They're fools. Why should you be around them? The companion of fools suffers harm. Examine people in your life. Who hears the law? Who obeys the law? Who's diligent to keep the law? Go among such people. Because he who walks with the wise becomes wise. Surely we will not obey perfectly. But we will have a pattern of obedience if we're wise. What else do the wise do? Well, they seek knowledge. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 14. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. But the mouths of fools feed on folly. The wise do not consider themselves too good for knowledge. It's not as if you get some status as the wise man and therefore you never open up a book again. No, where you find people that are hungry for the truth. There you find the wise. The wise seek knowledge diligently. They seek it systematically. They have a plan and a routine for how they're going to attain knowledge. They seek it always. It's not only a classroom activity for them, though it may be a classroom activity. They take advantage of the opportunities of church where where the word of God is being taught. They take advantage of resources online. So they're growing up in the truth. They read good books. There you find the wise. What else do the wise do? The wise restrain words. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge. They restrain untrue words. They hold back unfitting words. They hold back too many words. And they very often restrain their words in the presence of fools. They have a habit of not throwing their pearls to pigs. So if you're going to find a wise person, don't simply look to the person that talks a lot. Find the one who restrains his or her words. The wise move on ahead when others delight in sinful pleasures. That's what you see the wise doing. Proverbs chapter 15 Verse 21 says, folly is a joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight ahead. So here we are on the path and some people say, oh, folly, let me go off. It's a joy. Let me go engage in worldly pleasures. What do the wise do? They plod straight forward in the paths of God. They're not easily knocked off course. They have prepared for these temptations. They know they're coming. They have Examine the truth about sin and how sin's promises are always sweeter than what sin actually delivers. Their path is lit up by the word of God so they can press on straight ahead and their hearts are set on true joy in Christ. The wise also take advice. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10. By insolence comes nothing but strife, but with those who take advice is wisdom. Those who take advice. The wise are willing to receive truth from others. I've seen a man that's so concerned with the word of God. He loves the word of God. He reads the Bible day and night. He talks about how rich and precious the word of God is. And yet it seems that he's unwilling to receive it unless his own eyes are reading it. Have you ever met that man? He wants the word of God straight for himself, but he doesn't want to hear teaching from others. That's not a wise man. The wise man takes advice. And in a similar way, I've met a man who seems that he would take advice from everyone. He has sought counsel from nearly everyone that you've ever met about the situations in his life that he's facing. And yet he always finds a different path than the one that people have counseled him to, toward. He doesn't take advice. He gathers it. He listens. But he doesn't follow the counsel of the wise. Such men are not wise. Wise men take advice. 
And finally, the wise receive reproof. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. There are many passages in Proverbs about the rod of correction from parents to children. The rod of reproof gives wisdom. Many people have called it the wisdom wand. It imparts wisdom. What happens if a child's left to himself? He brings shame to his mother. And you've seen this in the Walmart aisle before. We live in such high-minded humanitarian times we are we are we are full of love for man and we've exalted man over god we simply need to acknowledge that we need correction we need reproof our children need it we need it the wise understand that the wise receive reproof they are corrected think of the implications for parents oh that we would not raise sons and daughters that are fools but we love them enough to give them what they need that they might be wise. So are these actions your actions? Do you hear the law? Do you obey the law? Do you restrain your words? Do you take advice? Do you receive reproof? If you do so, you're wise. Are these the actions of your friends? Are these the actions of people who influence you? Take an honest assessment. Who, who are your role models? Are they the wise Or are they fools? The companion of fools suffers harm. Those who walk with the wise become wise. In conclusion, wisdom is found among the wise. If this is so, then we should find the wisest men and women if we would grow in wisdom. But not only the wisest men and women, but we must find the wisest one of all. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. In whom dwells all the fullness of wisdom and knowledge. He is the one who has done battle against the foolish serpent. He is the one crowned with knowledge. He is the one who has laid up wisdom. He is the one who has all of the glorious possessions we've considered. He has the fear of the Lord. He has authority with parental love. He is the long-suffering servant. He has humility. He has heard And obeyed the law. He restrained his words. As he was like a lamb before its shears. So he opened not his mouth. He moved right ahead toward the cross. Setting his face to go to Jerusalem. While others sought after worldly pleasures. And Satan's devices. Friend. If you would have wisdom. You must have Christ. You must have our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And if you've never known what it means to be Christ's, to be in him, to believe upon him, we would call you this morning to trust in him. To see that he's the son of God and the son of man who lived, died and rose again for sinners like you and like me. And oh, that God would show you the foolishness of trying to relate to God and live well in this world apart from him. You desperately need him. He doesn't turn anyone away who comes to him. So confess your sin. Depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him. He's alive today. Trust him. And you too will be wise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have not left us to ourselves, but you have told us how we are to live in this world. You are the all wise God. Give discernment to your people now. That they would not be companions to fools, but they would walk with the wise. For we pray this in Christ's name. Amen.